Now, if I ask this question again, who won the ODI World Cup 2023? Uh, this model was trained on data available till October 2023. So, it uh, doesn't have the idea who won the World Cup uh, on November 19th, which is India. Right? Today, in this video, I am going to discuss what a LLM is and and how is it different from uh, RIG or retrieved augmented generation right so basically rack combines the power of llms with a retrieval system okay so hey everyone welcome back to the channel so today we are uh, starting something new uh, since last few days i have been uh, exploring the llms like large language models and all those stuffs lately i have been building some things to learn learn about llm so Today in this video, I am going to discuss what a LLM is and LLM means large language, large language models and how is it different from uh, RAG or retrieved augmented generation, right? So LLM and RAG, LLM and RAG are two popular terms nowadays in the AI world. So at the end of the video, you will not only understand the difference between uh, LLM and RAG, uh, but also see some hands-on examples on these two topics, okay, using LangChain. So let's get started. So I'll try to incorporate uh, and explain my understanding about LLM and RIG in the simplest way possible, okay? And how can we visualize uh, two, two technologies? And uh, then we'll also see some coding in Python and then we'll see how both differ from each other, okay? So, okay, let's start with the LLM first. So LLM or large language models. So you can think of this as the, as the AI models, okay? Uh, like uh, GPT or Palm or Llama, etc., right? These are the popular models that are built by big companies. So you can think of LLM as a pre-trained model on a big chunk of data. I mean, you have a huge data set and you have trained it, trained a model on it. It has the knowledge about the entire data set that it, it has been trained on, okay? So in the simplest form, you can think of LLM as a model which predicts the next word, okay? Given an input sentence word, right? Or in, input sentence. Let's say you are uh, giving a series of words or a uh, chunk of words as input, then based on that, uh, it will find out the semantic meaning and it, it will again, you know, predict the next uh, best possible word that will complete the entire sentence. So that will continue writing the writing a good sentence. Okay, that's how LLM works, but it's not that much simple. It has multiple internal layers like, you know, attention layer, then transformer layers are there, right? Which makes up, uh, makes up at the entire architecture of LLM. Maybe we'll require a different video to explain the internal architecture of LLM. Okay, I'll create a separate video for that as well. But for now, on a black box level or overview level, you think of LLM as a um, A model or a black box model, which knows what will be the best possible next word for a given series of words or a given series of words which has semantic meaning. It's not like uh, you, you throw random series of words and it will predict the uh, next word. It's not like that. Just like you write a uh, paragraph or write something, right? Or type a sentence or type a message. Similarly, in that manner only, given a series of uh, words which have some semantic meaning in it, it will predict the next possible best word for it okay to continue the chain so that was about llm okay now let's just uh, go to our jupyter uh, jupyter uh, notebook and see how llm works okay so if you see i have i'm using a langchain uh, library it's a python llm framework which is used to develop llm uh, based applications there are other frameworks also qai instead of different multiple frameworks are there langchain is one of them so i'm using langchain for this purpose okay I've also created my OpenAPI API key. You can create that and get your API key from OpenAPI because you will be using OpenAPI models, okay, to test these things. So I've imported few models, a uh, few packages. And here, if you see, this is our uh, LLM, okay? Well, I'm using the OpenAI model for this. As you can see, I'm using the GPT-40 mini. And I have defined a prompt, okay, because if you see here, for each LLM model, you have to pass some prompt. Based on that, it will give some answer or output, okay? And the main uh, limitation of LLM is it has limited knowledge. I mean, up to the point that the model was trained on, let's say uh, the model that I'm using is right now, is a GPT-40 mini. It has been trained and it, uh, trained on data available uh, in the internet till 2023 October, okay? So if I ask any questions or about an event which has happened after October 20, uh, 2023, it won't be able to answer because it doesn't have any knowledge about that. We'll again uh, see that. But uh, as you can see, we are passing this prompt, this prompt that you can see, this is the prompt, this is the model, LLM model, this is the LLM model. Then we have created a chain, okay, 
will again discuss about chain when i will be creating a video on lang chains uh, in detail so so what we are doing we, uh, on this um, on this chain we are asking few questions okay if you see um, let me just ask this question this is the first question that i am asking who won the odi world cup 2019 if i run this uh, one second let me just define this yeah if i run this you will see that it is answered england won the world cup in 2019 now if i ask the other question like who won the t20 world cup 2024 if i ask this question it won't be able to answer if you see it is returning like as of now the t20 world cup has not been taken place so there is no winner which is uh, not correct right it just took place on november last year uh, october uh, this year right sorry i think july my bad now if i ask this question again who won the odi world cup 2023 again it will uh, send a response as of my latest update in october 20 23 the odi world cup has not been concluded because the final happened in november 23 2023 uh, uh, and and uh, this model was trained on data available till october 2023 so it uh, doesn't have the idea who won the world cup uh, on november 19 which is india right so 2023 so that's what i mean so i cannot provide the winner please check the latest source for the most correct information so as you can see llm has a limitation because it is a limited knowledge beyond that or beyond that uh, time stamp beyond that point of time if you ask any question about any event that has happened it won't be able to answer simply uh, now if we understood how the llm works it's just a simple model is there we are passing some prompt and getting some answer in output and it has some limited knowledge that's it that's about the llm okay now to overcome this limitation of you know uh, uh, limitation in limited knowledge we will use rag so that's where rag comes into picture now let me just change the slide as you can see the uh, architecture of rag is quite different from the architecture of llm in llm we just had the llm model here right prompt was the input and answer was the, there was the output there but in rag if you see along with this llm uh, layer we have multiple layers in, uh, involved in it okay so what the, what does rag do basically rag combines the power of llms with a retrieval system okay this entire system is a retrieval system it, retrieval means it, it will retrieve some information okay from somewhere it can be we'll see from where it can uh, fetch the information but it will inf retrieve some information latest updated inf information about some events then use those information to give the answer of the user okay so if you can see here we have some uh, domain or doc domain data or document i mean uh, we'll again see a example just let's just first take a overview of this architecture okay we'll have some documents or, or the data okay which is periodically updated i mean which is which is the latest data then we'll convert those uh, documents to um this kind of uh, vectors or embeddings okay using using open source embedding model just like open ai embedding model so if you know if you want to understand more about embeddings then what is a vector okay how do we convert text into vector or long sentences or documents to vector Ch check out uh, this video click on the i icon above there i have discussed in detail what what is a embedding and what is a vector and how do we use this embedding to create vectors for different chunks or different uh, ch uh, length of text right so you can check out that video and we'll get to understand about it more in detail okay so now using this domain document see everything uh, everything is finally text data right so uh, using your embedding model uh, open source embedding model will convert these documents to vectors okay now these vectors document vectors will be stored in a vector database like face is there right which is uh, created by facebook and it's a in memory vector database kind of thing so this is frequently used for you know uh caching purpose or you know poc kind of thing or you know just to test the llm workflow but in production you will you will use a production grade vector database like chroma chroma is a production grade uh, vector database there is there are other database also like pine cone i think there lot of things are there production grade vector database okay so then the information basically we are encoding this information in vector form basically series of numbers you can think of it as axis right i mean a, a point in a huge dimension place right A vector in a, a big dimension, n dimension uh, space. So th once this document information is encoded in the vector database, we'll use a retriever. Okay. Now along with the prompt, we'll pass the relevant documents. Okay, which will be helpful to answer the given query. Again, I'll show you the code right now. 
but a job of the retriever is to retrieve some relevant document from the vector database then combine it with the prompt and then generate the answer then the same this now this both things will be passed to the llm it will generate the output okay now let's let me just go to the other next notebook as you can see we are uh, using implement uh, you are importing some uh, models from uh, modules from langchain we are uh, importing the face which will work like a in memory vector database for us so you can again check the same video for details about vector database and how it works okay you'll get a clearer picture so if you don't know about vector database i'll suggest you to check that video then come to this video and watch this from the beginning then we are uh, using open ai embeddings uh, to create the embeddings for our document now if i show you here see let's say this is our you know domain specific document or this is our you know latest information about something so we have some some information like india won to t20 world cup in 2024 by beating south africa the 2023 world cup was won by australia by beating india so this information are this information are documents so this document list that you see this is our documents okay now what we do we'll use this document and this open embedding to create vectors right so then what we do we are, we are taking the open embedding this embedding model we have taken here then we are from from these documents okay we are creating a vector store or the vector database okay using these documents and the embedding so as we saw documents and uh, embedding will give us the vector store now this is the vector store then we have created a retriever there okay so phase this uh, phase library provides all these things we've created a retriever whose job will be to you know give the relevant documents for a given user query then uh, answer the uh, given user query okay relevant documents it will face then based on those relevant documents it will uh, answer to a particular user query hmm. now if you see we have created our uh, retriever qa uh, chain where we are, we are passing the llm model right this is llm model we are passing then the retriever we are passing okay this retriever we are passing this retriever that we have created above we are passing and now we'll ask some questions to it okay now if you see here where will the champions trophy happen if i run this question yeah it answers that the 2025 champions trophy will be held in pakistan and dubai in a hybrid model okay now if i ask some other question who won the 2023 world cup australia won the 2023 odi world cup by beating india see how it understands our language i mean i mentioned the odi wc but it's still the llm is smart enough right this is where the llm comes into picture okay now this llm model is smart enough to understand that by odi wc i i mean odi world cup because if you see here here we did not mention any, anywhere about wc we mentioned odi w odi world cup okay now the llm model is smart enough to uh, uh, understand this abbreviation and uh, but uh, rela related with the uh, full full form of world cup right now if i ask the same uh, another question who won the 2020 world cup see how i have written the 2020 year okay and again wc i have written instead of world cup if i write this uh, run this query it will again be able to answer the question it will take some time let's do yeah india won the t20 world cup by beating south africa right here I mentioned a T20 World Cup, but here I asked 2020 WC. Okay, that's where the LLM comes into picture. Now let's ask the other question: Who won the 2024-2020 World Cup? There is just a format. I mean, different format. I asked the same question. Now, which trophy will happen in a hybrid way? Okay. Now we are asking like, see, the T20 World Cup, ODI World Cup, Champions Trophy. Now, which uh, uh, which trophy is going to be held in a hybrid model? Right. Let's just ask this. And it will, it clears us, uh, answers that the 2025 champions trophy will be held in a hybrid model. Okay, so it faced the information from this, and then it, it uh, created its own answer and answered an appropriate response to us, right? Which cup? Now let's answer this. Let, let's ask this question. Again, it is able to answer the question. So, the point of uh, telling you all this about the RA, uh, RAG system is. See, this can be a domain specific uh, document. Here we just took some random example of, you know, about cricket, uh, cricketing stuff and all. But let's say if you are uh, building some application for your use case, let's say, uh, let's say uh, you have opened an online coaching uh, platform or tutorial platform where you teach online and share study materials, PDFs and uh, 
lecture uh, lecture notes with your students right and while going through those lecture videos study materials the students might have uh, might, might get some doubts right and they will again put your put the question in a QA portal then you will review the question and answer them to automate this process what you can do you can you can actually create a llm application using the rag technique where what you will do you will uh, you will use your domain specific document that means your domain specific documents or what your video lectures right then your uh, study materials the notes that you have said the pdf that you are using to uh, just uh, teach the student set right? all those documents you can co convert it to embeddings using open embedding model so you know obviously the video can be con converted it into its script right text uh, text script then then that uh, entire document can be you know vectorized yeah using open embedding models so it's not like a, you know each file will be will have a single vector it doesn't work like that if uh, a document uh, size or the length of the document is big too big it is divided into some chunks okay chunks means some uh, section of the document or section of the paragraph then the chunks will be converted in document vectors so that's a different topic we'll again uh, uh, discuss there will be multiple things coming like how to use text splitter to you know divide a big document to simple chunks and create multiple vectors out of it for easier retrieval and easier and efficient retrieval by the vector database so those things will again discuss but yeah uh, coming back to the topic for your domain, your domain specific documents are video lectures and notes as I discussed, you will vectorize them, you will create a vector DV out of those information, then uh, users, I mean users or students, in your case the students are your users, right? Students will come and ask their doubts, those doubts will be, and the doubts or the queries will be used by the uh, retriever system to fetch relevant documents from that and combine these two things to generate a proper answer to the uh, questions, right? So this is just one use case uh, where the rag technique or retrieve augmented generation technique can be used. So there will be multiple other use cases like this. So basically, see LLM does not know about your uh, online uh, teaching uh, materials, right? LLM is a generic model. Similarly, let's say uh, in a manufacturing company where they have a lot of equipments running, a lot of machines running, a lot of sensors are there, right? Let's say in there they want to have some kind of uh, some kind of you know LLM application to check the status or efficiency of their machines or uh, equipments that are running. So they can again they have to again uh, whatever data they have domain specific data they have to again vectorize those database then they can use the LLM on top of it. So these are some of the use cases. Uh, there will be a lot number of use cases which you can actually use uh, a RAG technique to create LLM application around it. So just to re just to review, LLM is uh, a simple architecture like this. There will be a model, and in RAG, we actually retrieve some relevant document. The name itself contains retrieval, right? So we'll retrieve rele relevant documents first. Store relevant documents uh, in a periodic basis. Then when a user query comes, we'll retrieve relevant documents, okay, so from the vector database. Combine those uh, two things and then pass into the LLM to generate the response. So I hope you understood the basic difference between LLM and RAG. So RAG is a superset of LLM. Basically, without LLM, RAG cannot exist. So I hope you understood how RAG tackles the problem of LLM not having knowledge about the events that is uh, that has happened after it, after it was trained, right? Um, if you ask anything out of that data set or out of that uh, knowledge that it, it was trained on, it won't be able to answer. But uh, RAG, you know, efficiently and smartly solves this problem. I hope you understood uh, this basic difference. If you like this video, don't forget to, you know, subscribe to my channel and like this video for... Uh, more such uh, content like this. We'll be actually creating a series on LLMs and uh, RAG. Then a lot of uh, LLM concepts we'll be talking about and we'll be creating app, uh, Python applications around it. We'll be talking about agents, how multi-agent architecture wo works, how prompt engineering, uh, actually a useful thing, how do you create efficient prompts. All those things we'll be uh, covering in our uh, future videos. So yeah, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, and I have created uh, two other playlists also, uh, which I'll attach in the, at, at the end of the video. Just explore them and definitely like it. So we are targeting to reach 1800 subscribers by the end of this month. So keep supporting. So yeah, I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.